In this video, we will learn how to find a general solution of inverse trigonometric functions. So the question here is, write sine of cos inverse p plus sine inverse q as an algebraic expression. There are a few concepts which uh, I would like to make clear before we move forward. Uh, let us assume that uh, cos inverse p is equal to a. In that case, angle a should be between 0 and pi, right? Only in this interval, we can have inverse of cos as a function. Let's look into the cos function as such to appreciate it. So the cos wave is kind of like this, right? However, you will find that if you consider only half of the wave, it passes the horizontal line test. And therefore, its inverse is also a function. Do you see that? And therefore, we say that the value is between 0 to pi. Okay. Now, if cos inverse p is a, in that case, what is a equal to? So we can say cos a is equal to p, right? So we could write this as in this fashion. In that case, I can make a triangle. Let's make a triangle where cos a is p. Uh, let's say this triangle. Where the angle a, and when you say cos a is p, it means adjacent side is p and hypotenuse is 1. So what should be the opposite side? It should be square root of 1 minus p square, correct? And that gives you the value of sine A. So sine A will be equal to square root of 1 minus p square, correct? So we get the value of sine A and cosine A. Now let's work with sine inverse Q. So let us say that sine inverse Q is equal to B. In that case, sine B is equal to Q. Now, sine function, you can always find inverse of sine function if we restrict the domain of the sine function to minus pi by 2 to plus pi by 2, correct? So, whenever we talk about inverse of a sine function, we take the domain from minus pi by 2 to plus pi by 2. So, during this interval, we have all the values of sine function from minus 1 to plus 1, right? So, from minus 1 to plus 1. So, the value of angle B should be between minus pi by 2 to plus pi by 2, correct? Since we know that sine B is Q, we can consider the triangle with opposite side as Q, right? So, if the triangle has an angle of B, opposite side is Q, hypotenuse has to be 1 and uh, adjacent will be square root of 1 minus q square. And that gives you the value of cosine b, right? So we have cos b equals to square root of 1 minus q square. Perfect. When we know both values of uh, sine a cos b cos a sine b, we can find what this is. What we are trying to find? Sine of cos inverse p plus sine inverse q, right? That is sine of cos inverse p is a plus b. We can expand this using the compound angle formula, which is sine a cos p plus cos a sine b, correct? Now we can substitute the values which we just found here. Sine a cos p, so that means these two values, which are square root of 1 minus p square, and cos p is square root of 1 minus q square. As far as cos a sine p values are given, they are a and b, right? So, um, I mean, they are p and q. p and q. So we can write this as p q. And therefore, the value of sine of sine inverse, uh, sine of cos inverse p plus sine inverse q 
can be written like this, right? So this is a general solution. You could write this in the form p cube plus square root of 1 minus p square times square root of 1 minus q square, correct? So that becomes the general formula for writing the exact value. We'll take now a few examples and also see how this domain helps us to find the exact values in different scenarios. I'm Anil Kumar and I hope that helps. Feel free to post your comments and suggestions. Thanks for watching and all the best.